Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we'll be talking about physics and collision in Godot 3. Everything I'm about to show you is done in 3D, but it's exactly the same for 2D. To get things started, you'll need a camera in your scene, you'll need to save your scene, and you'll need to set up a main scene in your project settings. If you're not sure how to do that, go check out the Playing the Project video and come right back. The best way to think about physics is how does an object move, or how does it not move? And then the best way to think about collision is how we can give it a defined surface to interact with the rest of the world. In Godot, you have three main ways that you can define the physics body. There's a kinematic body, a rigid body, and a static body. You also do have a vehicle body and a soft body, but those are out of the scope of this video. So a static body will let the engine know that this object isn't going to move, but other objects can still interact with it. A rigid body will have physics applied to it, so gravity will take effect and you can also define the properties of the object, like weight and mass. A kinematic body can be moved, but physics won't affect it. You'll have to define your own physics manually. This is usually used for characters and input movement. Now that doesn't mean you couldn't use a rigid body for a character, but it can be difficult for the player to use. So I'm going to make a mesh instance cube for my floor, and I'm gonna make a mesh instance sphere for my physics object. Now let's give the floor a static body, and let's give the sphere a rigid body. Now, if you go and hit play, you'll notice that nothing happens, and there's a reason for this. In Godot, the hierarchy and order of things are very important. So your physics body doesn't want to live inside of your mesh, your mesh wants to live inside of the physics body. So we'll switch the physics bodies and we'll put the mesh instances under the physics bodies. And now if you hit play, you should see your object falling. But now we have a different issue. It's falling, but it's not actually colliding. We need to add collision. And if we come over to our scene window, you can see that there's these caution signs next to the physics bodies. If you click on them, it'll say this node has no shape. Consider adding a collision shape or a collision polygon. So there's two ways that we can add collision. We can add a collision polygon or a collision shape. Now the first one is collision polygon. I don't actually recommend using this one. This one can be a little strange, but it lets you construct your collision point by point. So what you need to do is you need to come over to polygon and you click on pull vector two, and then you'll see size. It needs to be greater than zero. And once you add that, if you click in the viewport, you'll see a red dot appear. And if you keep clicking, you'll get more red dots. And what you're doing is you're constructing a polygon. But as you can see, it can be difficult to construct collision with this. Now the second one is collision shape. And that's almost just like the mesh instance. The same way that we have primitives in there, we have primitives in the collision shape. So we'll add a collision shape to the static body and a collision shape to the rigid body. And as soon as we do that, you'll notice that next to the collision shape, there's a caution sign telling us a shape must be provided for the collision shape. And just like the mesh instance, we do that by coming over to the inspector and going to shape. Now for the rigid body, since I already have a sphere for a mesh instance, I'm gonna do the same thing. And then for the floor, I'm gonna add a box. Now by adding these, they actually fit pretty well to the geometry that's already there. But if you need to change the size of them, you'll notice that there's a red dot in the viewport and if you grab that and drag it, you can change the size of the bounds of the collision. Now another way you can do that is, you don't go into the transform and change it, you go into the sphere next to the dropdown, and you go to edit. And then from here, you can set the properties of the shape. In the mesh instance, you have the same options by going to the mesh, the dropdown, and going to edit. And you can see the properties in here. So with the physics and the collision set up, we can run our game again. You should see your sphere fall and land. It's actually colliding now. So now, if you go to your rigid body, and you look at your properties in the inspector, you can play with these settings. You can change the mass or the weight. They're the same thing. If you change one, it'll change the other. And then if you want to play with the gravity scale, you can. Now the thing to note about the gravity scale is that this is actually multiplying the engine gravity. And the way that you can see the engine gravity is by coming up to project and going to project settings. And in here, if you come down to physics 3D, you'll see default gravity. And you can change this if you want. The other thing that we have is a physics material. So if you click on this dropdown and you go to new physics material, you'll get some other settings. You get friction, rough, and bounce. So bounce, for example, if we turn this up, it'll be like a bouncy ball. Boy. Boy. Now some of these other settings will be talked about in a later video, but sleeping, if you turn this on, Basically, when you hit play, it won't do anything. If you want, you'll be able to toggle this on and off in code. Now, the physics material that we made, that's not the only way you can make it. If you go to your resources or your file system, 
and you right click and you go down to new resources, you can search for physics material and you can create one from here. And what's nice about this is if you wanna reuse it for multiple assets, you can. Now the last thing I wanna show you in this video is debugging your collision. It's really simple. So right now when you play, you don't see any collision and that's what you want in the end when you ship your game. But if you wanna debug and see your collision when you play, all you need to do is come up to debug and turn on visible collision shapes. All right guys, this should cover physics and collision. If you thought this video was useful, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.